Wednesday, 24th of June, 2015, Chris Barris is uh, as a guest in Blues Moose Radio and did some recordings for Blues Moose Cafe. You came over, Chris, for one recording and more tomorrow back up to Devon in the UK. How was it for you? Yeah, great. I had a fantastic time. Um, I think the Dutch audience are um, probably one of the best crowds I've ever played to, I think. Uh, back to Chris Barris. What brings you to the Blues? Um, I think that's what I really started off with uh, when I was growing up. Gary Moore, um, as an influence, was massive for me. Um, he was introduced to me by my dad. He got me started off playing guitar. And um, if you were a singer, but it's quite a different than in the blues scene. Yeah, I mean, like f for years and years, I, I had a, like a function type band. We played pubs and things as well. But um, yeah, we used to do weddings, and you know, to be honest, you can earn a lot of money in that scene, but um, you don't really get much appreciation from the crowd. You know, they're just they're just drunk and want to hear songs they know. You know, I was, I was more I was playing songs that they wanted to hear rather than songs I wanted to play. You know, it was now I'm playing what I want to play to people that want to hear it, and that's what it's about for me. You released the CD. A couple of months ago, Chris Barris was, was tightly also Chris Barris, so you're not a very creative person <laughs> according to CD titles. <laughs> but the songwriting, um, you do it all yourself? Yeah, I did it all myself. Um, and uh, I actually recorded it myself in my own recording studio as well. I recorded and pre engineered and produced it all, all by myself. Um, obviously the lads, John Perrin on drums and Ricky Mitchell on uh, bass guitar, they did a fantastic job as well, uh, bringing it all together. Um, yeah. Um, the lyrics, all these self words about, must, was mostly what you write about. Um, yeah, I mean, I write about all, all kinds of different things really. Um, not picking cotton and losing your love. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I mean, one of the songs of, of the album that means most to me is probably Watching Over Me. Um, I actually lost my dad three years ago to cancer, and he used to be the bass player in my band like for a number of years. Um, and that, that's, that's a song that was like for him, you know, and I think um, it's a shame he didn't get to see what I'm doing now, really, because he, he would have really loved it, you know. Um, so that's one of the songs that's got, got a lot of meaning um, to me on the album, really. Is it easy to write the songs? Does it come easy or is it a struggle? What, what's, 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 um, what do you work with first, the music or the lyrics? Uh, very good question. I think, um, for me, I found this album easier than anything I've ever written before because I've had quite a few years off um, from music, music not really being my priority. Um, and I think I kind of had like a big creative build up so that when it when I actually came to sit down and, and write the album, I found it came like, like came pretty quickly really. Um, I t being a guitarist um, by nature, I, I think I, I tend to start with the music first, um, and then n normally melodies and then lyrics kind of c come after that really, depending on the kind of emotion that I've tried to invoke with the music really. You um, you said you, you took a few years off. That's um well, you're, you're into kickboxing of Muay Thai fighting, as I said. That, we don't see that a lot of often in musicians, <laughs> that they prepare to beat the hell out of somebody else or themselves, yeah. and then even can play guitar. Yeah, well, um, I mean, for me, I've kind of done two things like my whole life. Um, I started off with martial arts very young, just on things like karate, like most kids do. Um, and I started off playing guitar when I was very young, at the age of five, six years old as well. So I kind of did that, both of those things throughout the whole of my childhood. Um, and then was I like 18, uh, 17, 18, and, and the music started to take off. Um, I toured the States a couple of times and things seemed to be going quite well. Um, and I didn't really get to the next level. And I kind of went back to um, the martial arts. And it started off as a hobby and then actually found out I was actually all right at it. Had a couple of amateur fights, and it kind of just just progressed on, really, and ended up becoming kind of my career, and ended up fighting. Um, spent a lot of time in Las Vegas training and fighting in Thailand, Singapore, and some of the biggest shows in the world. And the funny thing is, if you're seeing your uh, fingers, and you got boom boom written on it, 
And we thought that's the song of John Lee Hooker, but it's not. <laughs> well, it's a great song. Um, no, that's, that's my fight nickname, Boom Boom Barris. <laughs> uh, Ricky, the bass player in the band, still calls me Boom Boom. It was still, you'll hear him shouting it out, Boom Boom! Um, yeah, it's, you know, when you're getting your knuckles tattooed, you kind of got to think of two four-letter words. Um, Love, hate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been my fight nickname since I was, like, 19 year, 18, 19 years old, so um, I thought, why not? Now you're, uh, you, well, you, you tasted someone as live on the road than a musician. Is it something you can say, ah, this is something I like to do until I get 70 year old, like B.B. King? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, music for me, um, I just want to do things that I enjoy, but at the moment, I'm, you know, I, I, I've got my job. Um, I haven't got to worry about, about that side of things. Music's not necessarily my job. I just do it for fun. Uh, I just want to do gigs, good gigs, get, get on the festival scene um, across Europe, try and play some of the, the bigger festivals um, in Holland, Germany, wherever else in Europe, really, and, um, yeah, play my music to people that want to hear it. Um, back to your, your music and then especially your voice. That's what triggers me when I heard the CD at first, that it is, you get so much power in the voice. It, it, it triggers me, like uh, Tony Spinner, where also the, the, a few singers are like the Eagles. That kind of high pitch, but really onto the note. Is it something you practice, or is it com comes it naturally? Um, well, thanks for the Tony Spinner reference. I think the guy's awesome. Um, I, I wouldn't say I was in his league, to be honest, but um, no, thanks for that. But yeah, I. I mean, I, I think voice is like anything, it's an instrument um, and, you know, you get better at guitar by practicing guitar, you get better at singing by practicing singing. I wasn't always the best singer, I mean, um, you'll never ever hear them, but if I ever played to you some of the early recordings, like, you'd, you'd cringe at, at my voice, you know, I think it's just over the years, years as I've matured, my range has gotten, uh, gotten bigger and, and the high notes don't seem so... Uh, so much of a job to hit now, really. I don't, it's just, just as time's gone on, as I've done the gigs over the years, um, it's just kind of developed with that, really. What do you see yourself in ten years, or well, maybe five years, uh, as a, in the Chris Barris band? Well, hopefully, just... Um, I mean, it's, it's been a whirlwind of a year so far, really. We only released the album in, like, end of April, and um, some of the stuff we've done already, like coming over and doing this, um, it's been... Like fantastic, you know. I would have probably put playing at the Blues Moose Cafe in my five-year plan, you know, not not a three-month plan. Oh, it's it's a one-year plan. You started at the Blues Moose Cafe, you know. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? Um, hopefully, you know, we'll be doing some playing some of the bigger venues, some of the bigger festivals, and um, yeah, maybe our own headline tour. And who knows? Are you a guitar buff? I, I saw you had one guitar with you and one pedal. Uh, uh, pedal uh, instruments. It was pretty basic. Yeah, I've never been one um, to really get into the, like the te technical side of things. Um, well, that, that's odd for somebody who's also a guitar teacher. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've, I think I'm technical in, in terms of actually like guitar technique um, and like theory knowledge and things. I spent a lot of time um, stu studying that. But with regards to pedals and stuff, I, I don't. You know, I gigged for five, six years just plugging straight into the amp. Um, at the moment, all, all I do is I use my, my Laney head on a clean channel and I've got the um, Tech 21 um, Sans Amp pedal. The, it literally, that just acts as having basically a, a stomp box, a boost and a delay all in one pedal. So I, I don't like multi-effects where it sounds like too, I, I don't know, uh, processed I suppose. I like the pure sound. I, I tend to do a lot just on the volume control of the guitar. I think, you know, especially with a guitar as good as a Telecaster, I think you can get, you can get the tonal variations out of that. You don't need 20 different pedals. Plus, I just get confused. It's hard enough <laughs> singing and playing guitar at the same time, remembering the words, remembering the chords. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I'd be able to pull that one off. <laughs> Are you a guitar player for guitars? Do you, do you urge for the 59 Gibson, for instance? No, uh, to be honest, I don't like Gibsons. I've never been, <laughs> been a fan. Um, yeah, Gibson's one of those guitars that I've always seen, that I've wanted to like. I've always wanted to like Gibsons, but I just, I've never, I've always, I've been a Fender man, really. Um, I've, got, I've got a nice um, 1980 Strat. I've got a custom shop telly that I've been playing um, a lot recently. I did the whole album, that one. And uh, yeah, I, I like older guitars. I like the whole worn look, the relic kind of vibe. 
Um, but but yeah, I, I, I don't get too caught up in uh, in in the whole thing really. No, it's expensive if you do if you yeah. do. So. <laughs> You're, I've seen some instruction videos on YouTube that you say this is how you play the guitar in this tone and that sort. Are you? And you're also a martial art teacher. You're a teacher from from a region. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I started teaching guitar when I was like 14, 15 years old. That that kind of came about just from people seeing me play around the school and asking me if I could teach them. And I used to teach people my lunch break and I used to stay behind a couple hours after school a few nights a week and teach people then. Um, and it kind of just progressed from that really. I, I, was, I was gigging regularly by the age of 16 and people always asking me, oh, do you teach guitar? And it just kind of spiraled. And when I was about 17, I actually, I quit college to become a rock star. <laughs> and- um, You're Halfway there. <laughs> tell about, um, but yeah, I got a job in a recording studio and, and I was very fortunate enough that um, they gave me a chance to, to work there and I actually built my um, student base up quite a lot. I used, I used to teach a lot, of, I used to teach up to 60 people a week actually. Um, and then I got a job teaching um, at a specific guitar music college called the Academy of Music and Sound. I uh, taught there for a few years. Um, everything kind of just spiraled on. I, I did a couple of DVDs for different companies uh, with Chops From Hell and Shred Academy. Um, but back then I was more about kind of like the ultra technical shreddy speed playing to be honest, kind of like rock, jazz, fusion stuff, bit bit shreddy, uh, lots of notes in a small amount of time. <laughs> Is it not uh, bothering you that you have to play perfect on stage, that, you, that it maybe uh, cost you the spontaneity on, on stage, that you want to be every note on the right spot? Uh, I can imagine that if somebody teaches music, he wants to do it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think, uh, as a as a musician, I, I don't as a, as a music, musician that's always trying to improve. I find that I'm always like hypercritical of myself, so I'm never fully happy with with any performance, really. To be honest, I, I listen back to the album, and think, oh, I could have done this better, could have done that better. Um, I just have to accept that I, I did what I did in in the moment, really. I, I find that. Um, I've kind of come full circle. I've, like when uh, in my early twenties and my late teens, I was such a technical uh, tech head. Really, everything had to be about you know what mode I was using, what chords, and, and all this kind of stuff, and, and you know trying to sweep pick 30 notes a second, and all this kind of stuff. But now I've kind of just come around, you know, back and just just playing the guitar. You know, I will hit some duff notes, and I don't know. Maybe I'll just hear it twice so it sounds like I did it on purpose. <laughs> but I, I just kind of, I prefer these days, I suppose I'm getting a bit older, I prefer like the raw power of the guitar, you know, like the raw emotion, you know, like people like Kenny Wayne Shepherd, you know, and he, he's not the most technical player in the world, but when he hits a note, you know, he means it. And that, that's what I'm, you know, I find myself striving to achieve more than, you know, racing up and down the fretboard, really. That's what they say about BB King. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. When he hits a note, you got it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And um, obviously I wouldn't say that I can hit a note like BB King <laughs> just yet, but um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm aiming towards, yeah. Chris, thank you very much for uh, being our guest in Blue Smooth Cafe, as we call it, and we are absolutely sure that we're going to see you uh, back on the continent, wherever it is, and when we have the time, we're going to see your performance on stage again. Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've been treated like a king. And um, yeah, hopefully I can come back to Holland sometime soon. Thank you. We hope so.